relation on the set omega. Okay, so suppose that there is a Kirchhoff's relation, then the following set, and I'm defining this as, as follows, so you can see. That, so this will be omega x. Okay, so omega x will be the equivalence class of x. Okay, so what is that? What does it mean? So that is the collection of all elements from omega. Okay, that relate to x. Okay, so this is the definition of the equivalence class. Okay, this this called. Okay, so this is called equivalence class. Class of X. Okay. So what's actually the definition of equivalence class? An equivalence class is a set that contains all elements that relate to X. So this is the equivalence class of X. Okay. So the equivalence class of X is a set that contains all elements that relate to X. Okay. Okay. So let me add this as a as a remark. So equivalence equivalence <coughs> class of X is a set that contains all elements that relate to X. Sense? Yes. Why relate to x and that and not uh, relate from x? Okay? Because if x relates to a certain element, then the element is in the equivalence class. This is how it's defined. So x relates to y. You see this here? Yeah. Okay. So y is an equivalence class of x. You see? So for instance, I mean, look at the example. Okay. So for instance, here. So, for instance, what the equivalence class of two, okay, contains, for instance, the element zero. Why is that? Because zero relates to two. How come? Because the two elements relate to each other here, okay. So, two elements relate to each other if their sum is equal. But does, does zero relate to two, or does yes, zero relates to two. Zero. Both, because the relation is symmetric. It's a equivalence okay. relation. You understand? So the relation is symmetric, it's a equivalence relation. So then there is the expression equivalence class. Both. So if x relates to 2, then 2 relates to x. And the same thing. So 0 relates to 2, then 2 must be also related to 0, right? Okay? So 0 is an equivalence class of 2 because 0 relates to 2. Okay? And of course, 2 would be an equivalence class of 0 because 2 relates to 0 as well. Alright? And here you would find that the equivalence class of, let's say, equivalence class of uh, 2 and equivalence class of 4 and, and so forth are actually equal. Okay? All right? Good. Now let me give you the partition, guys, what the partition is. So what is the partition? And uh, this is the definition, what comes next. Okay? The sets. Okay? The sets. And uh, let's say that there are infinitely many. I mean, you can have as many as you like. So let's say A1. A2, etc., etc., constitute a partition of the set omega if two or if both condition are both conditions are satisfied. Okay, so first off, if the union, okay, so the union of these sets, okay, etc., etc equals omega. So if you put them together, then you get omega. Okay, so that's the first one. And the second property that must be satisfied, okay, is that the, the sets, two different sets are pairwise in its joint. So if you have, let's say, the set AI and you have the set AJ, then you would get actually that the intersection of the two set is the empty set. Okay, so in case that i is different from j, okay, so that is what is you know the uh, the, uh, the partition is about. Okay, so two two different sets must be disjoint. That constitute and that consists of the partition of omega. You understand? Okay, so for instance, you have something like this. Okay, so 
I mean, just I'm, I'm I can see that you know um, you know you know don't seem to know what the partition is. I mean, let me just give you here. Let's say for instance, an example to that. Okay, so this is the this shall be shall be the set omega, and here whatever you would have. Let's say this is the set A. Okay, that is the set B. This is not scale to size or whatever. I mean, you can you can use anything you like uh, what you want. And this is, for instance, the set C. Okay. And the sets A, B, C constitute the partition of the set omega. Why is that? Because if you put them together, then you get omega. Okay. So if you unify them, okay. So constant. Let me just add this. The, the sets. Okay. So the sets A, B, and C constitute. A partition of omega. Okay? This is what a partition is. Because their union is equal to omega and their pair was a disjoint. Okay? Let me just add this. Because their union is equal to omega and they are pairwise in this joint. Okay, see? All right. Yes? Just to give another example. Yeah. Um, so suppose that omega is a data set. Omega is what? It's a data set. Data set, yeah. yeah. ABC uh, are fractions of the data set. Let's say A is uh, the SP 500, B is the NASDAQ, whatever. Yeah. So um, in that case, what would be the equivalence class of A? That's a good question. But all you, I mean, this is, uh, this relates to it, but what you have, you can show is that each partition generates an equivalence relation on the set in which defined, uh, on the partition is defined. And each equivalence relation generates a partition on the set on which the, on which the equivalence relation is defined. That is the basic point that we we are we would like to discuss here. Okay. So, for instance, if you I mean you could you could use the following equivalence relation if you take let's say instance two stocks or whatever I mean let's say this is a portfolio whatsoever I'm going to show it. Okay. So suppose that you have a portfolio. Okay. So um, you can define equivalence relation from that as, as follows. So if x x rates y, if let's say x is of, of the same kind of that what y is. Okay. So if let's say for instance you know stocks or bonds or whatsoever, and that is you know, consistent with your portfolio, then you can say x relates to x if x are uh, either if x relates to y if x and y are two stocks, or if x and y are two bonds or whatsoever. Okay. So that would be the corresponding equivalence relation. Okay. All right, so that basically directly follows from the partition. But what is important here is that each equivalence relation generates a partition, and each partition also generates an equivalence relation. So that these two things are actually are equivalent. Okay. So if you have that's a basically if you have a partition that 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 indirectly defines an equivalence relation on the set in which the partition is defined. And if you have an equivalence relation on the set, which is defined here, you know, that relation is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive, then what you get is that basically you would also generate the corresponding partition on the set of, on which the, uh, the equivalence class, uh, the equivalence relation is defined. Okay? And the equivalence classes that are there constitute the partition on which, on the set on which defined. Okay? This is, this is a statement that I would like you to, uh, would like you to add here. So this, I'll put this in the remark, okay? Okay, so equivalence classes, classes that relate to an equivalence relation, okay? So the equivalence classes are generated by an equivalence relation. And these equivalence classes always constitute a partition of the set, okay? So constitute constitute a partition of the set on which 
the equivalence relation. Relation is defined. Okay. Okay. All right. You see, and that is that is a very important significance. Um, we'll come back to it when we, when we talk about you know measurability and stuff like that. So equivalence classes is actually this is a concept that is very very important. Okay. And. Uh, I would like to, I mean, I would make sure that you are aware of this concept, okay? All right? Good. Now, I told you that two equivalence classes are either equal or disjoint, okay? So, and this is like what's something that I would like you to, to show you here in the next, in the remaining, let's say, three or four minutes, okay? So this is part of the segment that I will be considering here. And can I continue, guys? Okay, so basically, and how do I show this? Okay, basically you can show that two equivalence classes are equal, either equal or disjoint. Okay, then uh, what you can do is following. I mean, and this is part of the statement that consists of now. But I would, uh, I forgot something, so this is whatever. Um, basically, from set theory, so two sets are equal. So A is equal to B if and only if both A and B are subsets and supersets of each other. Okay, so A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A. Okay? All right, you understand this? Okay, good. Now, I would like you to show you that the following statement, and this is, um, this is an example of example number three. Okay, so this is an example Okay, so two equivalence classes are either equal or disjoint. Okay, two equivalence classes are either equal or disjoint. Now, the proof, I mean, how to show this consists of actually two parts. Now, in the first part, okay, I will show you that if x relates to y, okay, then this implies that the equivalence class of x, or the intersection of the equivalence class of x and the equivalence class of y, cannot be empty. Okay, that's the first step. Okay? All right? And this is explained actually verbally, but I'm, I'm, I'm proving that formally so you can see that, I mean, how it's actually proved formally. So this is the first statement that I'm showing here. So if x relates to y, then the equivalence classes cannot be disjoint. Okay? So this is the first statement. And then I show that if x relates to y, then the equivalence class of x is a superset of the equivalence class of y, and the equivalence class of y is a superset or a subset as well and, uh, of the equivalence class of Okay, so let me show you that first and then um, we're actually done with that. So how, how is actually shown? Now since actually the, the uh, if x rates is y, okay, now this implies that the element y is, uh, sorry, is, an, is an element of the equivalence class of x. That's basically certain, okay? You understand? It? That's the first part, okay? Now, since x is reflexive, uh, sorry, the relation is reflexive, so x relates to x, okay? This implies that the element x is also an element of the equivalence class of x, okay? As we've seen that in the previous example, so 2 was an element of the equivalence class of 2, remember? I mean, I, you know, I don't have that here on this slide, but you've seen that in the, in the example. That example demonstrated actually what equivalence class is. Okay, so both x and y are actually in the equivalence class. So this is the final synthesis. So both x and y are elements of the equivalence class of x, if x relates to y. Okay? Now since actually the relation is symmetric, which means that if x relates to y, then this implies that y relates to x. Okay? So here in that case, you can okay, so here in that case you can conclude 
that the element x must be also an element of the equivalence class of y. OK? You understand? And since, of, I mean, of course, and you can see this here, so in both cases, I mean, we can add this, but this is no longer necessary. So basically, since also y relates to y, and this is an equivalence class of y, OK? So, I mean, let me just add this here because relation is also <coughs> is also reflexive here as well. Okay, so since y relates to itself, that means, okay, so this implies that y must be also an, um, an element of the equivalence class of y. So here you would find, basically, as a final statement, that both x and y are, are elements of the equivalence classes of y. Okay? All right. Now, if these two elements are actually actually are in there, then you would find that actually both x and y are also elements of the intersection of the two, because that is how an intersection is defined. Okay, which means that basically that the intersection is not empty. That's the first part. Okay, and now I'm going to show you that the equivalence classes of x and y are equal. Okay, so, I mean, they could be also equal if both they are empty. But I don't need to say, but this is not the case. All right? You, you understand that part. Okay, so in the second part, I show that the equivalence classes of, so if x relates to y, then this implies that the equivalence class of x is equal to the equivalence class of y. Okay, so this is, sorry, this is the second part not the first part. Okay, so this is the second part. Okay, so if x relates to y, then it actually um, implies that the equivalence class is only four. So the equivalence class is both elements are equal in that case. All right? Okay, now how do I show this? I show this by the following. So I show this that x is a superset of y, and y is a superset of x, okay? Or a subset, you could say. Okay, so we show this by showing that. We show this, this by showing that um, the equivalence class of x is a subset, or a subset, let's say subset of y, and uh, the equivalence class of y is also a subset of the equivalence class of x. Because in that case, they are equal. Okay? So if two sets are both subsets and supersets of each other, then they are equal. All right? Now, how do we show this? And I'm using, maybe you, you get an idea? Or anybody else? I would first say, why yeah. is an element of the equivalence class of x? Yes. Uh, but. Uh, X and Y are equivalent, so that means that Y has also been an element of equivalent class of Y. Yeah. Yeah, so, so I mean, uh, we figure out that the, the intersection of the two equivalence classes is not empty, so there must be at least one element which is part of both equivalence classes, right? If we transitivity, then. Yes, exactly. So, since, I mean, this is what we have what we have here. So, since the equivalence classes, or the intersection of the two equivalence classes are not em is not empty, Okay, there is at least, this implies that there is at least one element, okay, which is, um, which is an element of the intersection. Okay, this is the sign for there is this, you understand? Okay, so this is, this was part actually of the previous statement. So if the two not if the two are the intersection of the two is not empty, then there must be an action element which is which is an intersection now. And this implies, on the other hand, if that element is an intersection, then this implies a Z, which is okay, so that is part of the intersection, is in both in equivalence class of X and also in the equivalence class of Y. You understand? Okay? Alright? So since I mean x x and x an element of the equivalence class of x and y is an equivalent of the, uh, of the elements of y, we have that of course that x relates to I mean this is what we have here x relates to um, 
I can just show you that. So here we, we actuate sub i. I mean, this is what we have. And well, we also have that y relates to z because y is an equivalence class of x. OK? Now, this implies, on the other hand, and you can see this here, that, um, I mean, let me just add this here. So y is relates to z, sorry. And what we also have is that x must be also relating to z. Because that is, of course, here in this equivalence class as well. OK? So this implies, actually, the transitivity property. So if x relates to y and y relates to z, then this implies that x relates to z, which means that the actually that the um, um, what you have here is that the I mean the transitivity property, okay? What you have I mean this is kind of obvious, and this means that for any element, okay? So if let's say that if any element z is an equivalence class of x, this implies also that it's also an equivalence class of y. Sorry, okay. So which means that x is a subset of y. Okay? So I'm I'm just using the transitivity property here. Okay? Because if x, I mean you can see this here. So z is an is an element of the equivalence class of x and an equivalence class of y, you can see. Okay? So this implies that if and for any element that is an equivalence class of x must be also an equivalence class of y. So this implies on the other hand that the equivalence class of x is a subset of the that's a y. Okay? Right? So due to the transitivity property. And we can, in the second part, we can actually exchange x and y. So then you would get also that equivalence class of y is also equivalence class of x. All right? Okay? And of course, if two elements do not relate to each other, okay? So this is the first part, then the equivalence classes are disjoint. Okay? So this is. The final part, so if, let's say, the elements do not relate to each other, if x does not relate to y, then the equivalence classes of x and the equivalence class of y is this joint. Okay? This is shown in the, actually in the last section of the example where this is explained, so I'm not going to... I'm not going to use that here any longer. Okay, so that is actually the proof of the statement that two equivalence classes are equal to all this joint. Okay? This is highly abstract, guys, as you can see. Okay? I didn't do any numbers, I didn't use any you know, calculations whatsoever, but this is what mathematics is about. Okay? It's about the ability to think. All right? All right? Okay, so you can see this here. I mean, this is, I mean, this is not the, the most elegant version of it, but you can see this here. Uh, that uh, from transitivity property, this is what we get. Okay, so here directly, actually, I didn't, I didn't actually, it's not supposed to do this, but if you, if you find this one, due to the transitivity property, then you, you get this statement here as well. Okay, and that is, that is important. Now, guys, okay, I would actually like to stop here and uh, please note that I will um, I will publish the first assignment I think by I'm not sure on Sunday evening so I will upload the first assignment on Sunday evening and I will announce that as well and in actually in this description that I give will give you is um, well, that contains actually how, to, how you submit the assignment, okay? So I'm going to give you like 10 statements, I can tell you this. So it will be like oh, 10 statements, and you would have to select that um, each statement either is, is true or false. And what you send me is you send me a sequence of zeros and ones, okay? Yeah, this is it. And you send me this by an email, okay? So you send me a sequence of... 10 elements of zeros and either of zeros and ones for, I mean, representing one representing the true statement and, and zero representing the false statement, all right? And this is what you, what you send me. Now, you can work together. I don't mind, okay? So you'll have time, let's say, five, four to five days 
to submit this under the assignment to me. So you send it back to me, and I will publish your results. So you give yourself, please, a, a nickname or something, Mr. Big or whatever, I mean, what you like, or kind of, you know, some, which does not relate to your real name. And please do not, do not send me your student identity, okay? Okay, because I'm not supposed to publish any result, you know, Relate with that relate to your student identity. So you have to self, you have to give yourself a nickname, okay? That is only recognizable for yourself. So if I assign a certain result to that nickname, then you know that is actually you, all right? And no one else knows, okay? So and the likelihood that you two of you guys are give yourself two, I mean the same nickname is actually zero. So but if that happens, then I will let you know. Okay, so one of you have to change. Okay, so maybe you can write capital letters or something. Okay, and please keep that nickname that you give yourself until the end of the course. Okay, please do not use empty spaces for that. Okay, you understand what I'm talking about. So let's say you, you give yourself the name Mr. X or something, or Mrs. X or Mrs. Y or whatever. Okay, and please keep that until the end of the course. Okay, and that name will be, I mean, I use that to assign results to that, so then you will know your results in advance and you don't have to ask, you know, what do I have or something like that. And we will publish, you know, a list of these nicknames and the results assigned to it. Okay, 10 questions, 10 answers, you know how the game works. Okay, right? Okay, and I will explain, in, actually, in the, in the announcement, I will explain in detail how you submit the assignments, okay? But that is basically what it's going to be about, okay? So the first assignment will be actually the um, proposition of factors. I think that was going to be. Maybe some close measures or something, I don't know. Okay, is this clear, guys? Okay, now if you have questions, you can, you can ask because I have to do that. All right, okay, thank you very much.